Welcome to Ritual Scale Modeling. This is part one of Revel's Cruiser Ship Area Scale 1 to 400. In the first part, I'm going to be concentrating on the bottom of the hull, getting the props and um, uh, hydro fins done, and um, putting the hull together before painting. So let's jump in and see how we get on. The first thing to do is to put the hull together. Now these are two support braces that go in first. I'm just cementing in half of it uh, initially before I put the hull together. And to cement the hull, I'm going to be doing it in stages, so um, bracket in each time I go. This just makes it easier for it to go together. Now there is location pins, as you can see there, the small ridges uh, to help you line it up. Uh, these work quite well, apart from the one on the bow, I had to take that one off. I wasn't quite lining up. Also, you should point out, it's very thick plastic, so um, it's, um, a lot, it takes a little bit more effort to bond the hull together. You're going to need clamps for this, um, as well as a good amount of patience for, for it to bond. It is quite essential if you, uh, to bond it in stages, because it will slip and slide uh, and move around and have you tried to do it all in one go so as you see I'm clamping as I go along um, making sure that the clamps are not too tight I don't want to distort the plastic the end part though I'm, I'm having to physically hold uh, for it to bond it took a long time for it to bond and I, I left it one or two days afterwards just to make sure it wasn't going to come apart once it was bonded, um, there's uh, some um, gapping issues that ha had to be uh, addressed. The, these uh, issues, I don't know whether it was me because of the bond or um, it's just a part of the build. E either way, just a little bit of filler in these areas. Uh, it was easy enough to take care of. I'm using Rebel Half Cooler 92 Brass and this is for the screws. Um, I always paint them fairly uh, quickly before the start of the build uh, just to make sure they're, they're paint, painted well. The Because of the brass or copper colour, it depends which uh, way you want to go, it does take um, one or two coats uh, to get a nice even colour uh, with these pigments, hence why I do them uh, straight away. Next is to build the housing for the smaller screws and uh, these propellers are, are going in it in an unusual angle. I think these are for uh, manoeuvring the ship um, from side to side. It's quite an ingenious way. I didn't know these ships um, had these um, propellers going in this direction. But this is the house I'm for it anyway. So I had to take it off because I forgot to uh, place in this brace for the um, shaft. Luckily I just placed it on so um, th there was no damage done. So I just quickly whipped it off and um, now I'm placing the housing back on. The the brace uh, fit sits underneath the, the housing. And once that's done, I'm just going to give it a quick sanding down the seam lines. Uh, the majority of the bottom of the hull, uh, I'm not so worried about, because you'll never see that. But towards the bow and the prow of the ship, I'm just making sure that has extra attention. And now it's time to put on the prop shaft. First of all, um, I'm leading in just to make sure it fits. I did have to open the hole up slightly for it to fit. Um, they weren't coming out as much as I wanted to. So I just simply opened them up by placing my knife inside the opening on the support bar and twisted it around to remove some plastic before um, cementing it into place, as you can see here. Next is the housing for the shaft. These are just um, two parts that, that just um, sit right inside the opening there. There's no location points as such. Um, it's a, a nice tight fit so it, they should just drop in for you. And then it's the um, rudders uh, going next. Again, they sit on top of the um, housing. There's a, a small little location point for them to sit in. You, you don't really have to cement these in position if you want any movement. Um, just um, heat up I'll, the um, runoff on the inside of the ship and press it down and that will act as a brace for it to stop coming out. So now I'm working on the hydro fins. There is uh, obviously two of them to go in. There's uh, the fin itself and in the inside there's a little housing. 
that gets placed on. Most importantly, when you're uh, putting these on, make sure you don't get any cement on the location um, socket for the hydro fin because if you do, you, you won't get any movement, of course. It will just um, weld into position. So make sure you you place in the hydro fin first before the housing. It just makes it a lot easier. You can theoretically do it the other way around, but why would you? It would just be too difficult to do. Next to go on is a, a little, uh, I think it's a flagpole um, how, um, platform that goes on. Now there is an opening for this uh, to be set in. It's a sort of wedge shape, so you have to make sure you get it the right way around and at the right angle for placing it in. Onto the light bolts, and there's three parts to the light bolt. This middle section here, I primed it white before I'm painting on Tamiya's X19 smoke. Now these uh, parts were clear plastic. I debated whether to leave it clear or uh, give it the smoky look. But I decided to give them the smoky look. I'm using Revel 310 Luthanzo Yellow for the top section of the life bolts. As you can see there's quite a few to do. So th this took uh, quite a lot of time to paint all these up. And the bottom part is 301 white silk. And that's the three main colours that make up the light, light bulb. So while it's, uh, the light bolts are drying, it's time to mask off the bottom part of the hull to give it some um, red uh, protective coat. And that's Tamiya's 6mm masking tape that I'm using to do this. I'm using uh, markings on the hull to line the tape up, starting from the middle and working my way uh, to the back then to the front of the ship. It's easier to do it this way instead of trying to mark it out with a pencil maybe. If you've got uh, markings on the hull that you can work with, then it's uh, just a lot simpler to do and do it in one continuous strip. I've then taken some paper and applied some more masking tape just to give um, the uh, coverage for the sides. Now, of course, you can use um, masking tape all over, but um, that's a lot of masking tape. Um, if you're airbrushing, um, you can do with a bit of stiff card and um, block it that way. But I find this way a, a bit easier to do. A little bit more time consuming to be sure. Uh, but you know it's completely all blocked off so that no paint will come out going to the parts that you don't want to be exposed. And before I go on to painting, I'm just making sure the hydrofoils are out. Um, the idea of placing them in now was uh, to, to make sure they're going to get the same colour and coating of the, of the rest of the hull. And once that's done, I'll take it away and give it some red primer. Back to the, the light bolts, uh, time for assembly. Very easy to assemble. Um, each part just fits on top of each other. There is location points for this. They, they just sit in a tiny amount of cement is all that's uh, needed for this. And uh, once they're um, all made up, uh, I'm just going to store these because they're not going to get used straight away. So I've just got some little bags here that I, I place them in. Mark the bags up with um, each panel number that is, corresponds to the, the box. Obviously you don't want to get them mixed up just in case they have to go on a specific way. Back to the hull and I'm using Rebel 331 Purple Red for the main colour of the hull. Now, this not necessarily might be, uh, be the, the correct colour uh, for the bottom of the hull, but this is the colour I use on all my ships um, for the bottom. In fact, the red primer is probably more to the actual colour required, but it means mixing up a lot of paint, or of course you can just um, varnish the primer uh, if, if you wanted to. Um, to me, there's no hard and fast rule. Once you varnish primer, it will act like paint, but remember, it's more of a powder coating than a paint. I'm using Revel Aquacolor 330 Furry Red, and um, this is for two dirigibles that um, sit inside the side of the hull. There's a little uh, opening where they sit into. Um, first of all, uh, there was just a, a small uh, assembly point to do. Um, like a bar goes on top of it, um, so I'll make sure I've done that before painting them. And as before, I'm painting them on the, the sprue. This is just for ease of handling. 
But if you do it this way, remember that you will have to touch up your paint um, before you place it on, on onto your model. It's time to put in the screws. Now there's six in total to put on. There's four small ones and two larger ones. The small ones, are these go on, onto the side of the hull. Um, as I said, I think these are for manoeuvring the ship when it comes into dock and so forth. The other two are, of course, the large ones and they just fit in on the back of the prop shaft. Now, be careful because I actually managed to snap two of the blades, one on the larger one and one on the smaller one. The connection for them was quite uh, thin, so any amount of pressure is going to snap them. I then use Revel Aquacolor 91 steel, and this is for the prop shafts before going on to uh, a bit of varnish just to protect the paint that I've already uh, placed on. And I'm using Pledge Clear Polish or Varnish uh, depending on uh, which one you have. There's so very many similar ones out there of um, the Pledge brand. Um, it can be a bit confusing which ones um, the, to get. But just make sure it's the Polish or Varnish because they're uh, acrylic based. And that's the ones you're looking for. So it's back to masking and um, once all the varnish is dry, this is to protect the uh, red part of the hull now. And this will be masking exactly the same way as the, the upper part, uh, part was masked. And once it's all masked off, I'll be painting the inside black. I'll be using a uh, normal everyday acrylic uh, artist paint which you can pick up in most um, hobby shops or online of course. Now the reason why you do this is to light block uh, any light coming out of the hull that you don't want it to do. Uh, depending on how strong your lights are, it sometimes can show through the plastic even if you've uh, done normal painting, hence why you light block. There's other ways to do of course, you can use paper, you can use uh, some tape uh, to fill it all in. Um, depends on you um, what you prefer to do. Well, I think this is a good place to end the video. The, the black paint will take quite a while to dry. Uh, once that's dried I'll um, repaint it again white uh, so it's um, all nice and re reflective. If you haven't done so already why don't you check out my channel for the other builds. There's quite a, f a few videos on there now for you to have a look at. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll be uh, notified of the uh, any um, updates um, for this build, including future builds. So it's quite important to subscribe to the channel, and also it helps me out as well. Hit that like button, and of course, uh, leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye-bye.